Good morning, Pastor Keith Hodges here, and I want to welcome you to the Fruitful Five, five minutes that will empower and equip you to live a fruitful life for Jesus Christ. Today, uh, I'm excited to talk to you about a topic simply entitled Disappointments. Uh, disappointments. And I want us to look in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. The Bible makes a pretty amazing statement. It says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when desire comes, it is a tree of life. So I want to ask you a question this morning. How do you deal with disappointment? How do you deal with the disappointments that happen in your life? How do you deal when things don't go your way? Because the reality is this morning, how you deal with disappointments will really very much determine the outcome of your life. Your destination will really be determined many times by how you deal with the disappointments and the setbacks that happen in life. Now, if you've been around any amount of time, if you've lived life for any season, then you realize that life is really full of disappointments. There are disappointments uh, that come in every form and fashion. The reality is, is many times life doesn't go our way. The things that we wanted to happen don't happen. Uh, the things that we even prayed were going to happen sometimes don't even happen. And so the challenge today that I want to give you is to ask yourself, how do you deal with disappointments? Because disappointment really uh, has a couple options with it. Disappointment has the ability to either, number one, steal your hope. I mean, disappointment can steal your hope. It can make you bitter. It can make you angry. It can make you cynical of all people and all things. It can even cause you uh, to walk away from your faith and your relationship with Christ. Uh, Jesus actually talks about, he makes a statement, he says, blessed are those who are not offended in me. Because the reality is, is because sometimes not only do we get disappointed with people, we sometimes get disappointed with God. We feel like God didn't do what he said he would do. We feel like God didn't work in the way that he said he would work. We feel like things didn't go the way that God had promised them to go. And so the challenge this morning is really to evaluate our hearts and say, okay, what am I going to do with disappointments? The Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. And so disappointment can do two things. Number one, I said it can, call, it can steal your hope. It can cause you to become bitter or angry or cynical. But it can also create an opportunity for you to hope against hope. And in Romans chapter 4, verse 18 through 21, I want to read you an amazing story of the account of Abraham, whom the Bible says hoped against hope. Look what the scripture says. It says, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. God had promised Abraham that he was going to be the father of many nations. And Abraham was a hundred years old and his wife, Sarah, was barren. She was unable to have children. And the Bible says this, that Abraham kept hoping. Even when there was no reason for hope, he had been disappointed. One day had turned into two days, had turned into three days, had turned into two years, had turned into five years. And God had given this to him this unbelievable promise, but it seemed like the hope that he had was being deferred. It was being pushed off. It was being delayed. It was being pushed away from him. And so Abraham had to make a decision. Was he going to lose his hope? Was he going to allow disappointment to steal his hope? Was he going to become cynical and angry and bitter toward God? Or was he going to keep on believing? Was he going to hope against hope and say, you know what, I'm not going to allow disappointment to steal my hope. I'm going to allow disappointment to cause me to hope against hope. So let's read the rest of the scripture. It says, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. Now, and Abraham's faith, the Bible says, did not weaken, even though he was about a hundred years of age, and he figured that his body was as good as dead, and so was Sarah's womb. Abraham, verse 20, never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. Look at verse 21. For he was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promised. Abraham hoped against hope. He said, you know what? I've been disappointed. I've been disappointed. My hope has been deferred. The thing I was believing was going to happen in a week didn't happen in a week. The thing I was believing was going to happen in a year didn't happen in a year. The thing I was believing was going to happen in five years didn't happen in five years. But Abraham, the Bible says, refused to give up. He was fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Let me give you just a final thought this morning. If you lose your hope, what happens when you lose your hope? When you lose your hope, you actually abort the seed of faith 
that is intended to produce the tree of life in your life. Listen to what the scripture said. Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, when your hope is fulfilled, when your faith is brought to fulfillment and completion, look what it says, it is a tree of of life. I want to say to you today, the devil wants to steal your hope. He wants to use disappointment to cause you to lose hope. But God says in the midst of disappointment, I want you to hope against hope. I want you to hold fast to the confession of your faith. I want you to become unwavering. And I want you to be convinced, God says, that he is able to do what he's promised. And here's what will happen. If you'll refuse to lose your hope, then that seed of faith will become a tree of life that will begin to prosper and bless you. It will produce fruit, not just for you, but for generations to come.